Welcome to our lecture online. Let's go back and review what we've done so far. We've figured out that there's something called the frictional head loss in fluid flow in a pipe when there's internal friction because of the pipe, the construction of the pipe, and because what happens inside the molecular forces of the fluid flowing through the pipe. To calculate the frictional head loss, we found this equation right here, which included what we call the friction factor. And when the flow was laminar, we could calculate the friction factor by taking the number 64 and dividing it by the Reynolds number. Note that we can find the Reynolds number by taking the density of fluid, and this should be a small v for the velocity of the fluid, times the diameter of the pipe divided by the internal viscosity or the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. Now, this is good if we have laminar flow, but what if we have turbulent flow? Well, for that we need what we call the Moody diagram. The purpose of the Moody diagram is to find the friction factor, that very same constant right here, which is unitless, for turbulent flow instead of laminar flow. And it's a lot more complicated for turbulent flow because it depends not only on the Reynolds number, but it also depends on something we call the relative pipe roughness. And we can calculate the relative roughness of the pipe by taking epsilon divided by the diameter of the pipe. We'll explain in the next video what that really means. All we need to do in this video is try and understand how to obtain the friction factor if the fluid flow is turbulent instead of laminar. So on this diagram, on the left side, we have the friction factor. On the right side, we have the relative pipe roughness. On the bottom, we have the, rel the Reynolds number. Notice that we start by calculating the Reynolds number. So that would be no different. But let's say that the Reynolds number is greater than 2,000. Below 2,000, we have laminar flow. Above 2,000, we first have what we call the transition region. And then we have turbulent flow. Notice that not until the Reynolds number gets well above the 2000 range, we have what we call complete turbulence. Between, between that, between 2000 and some value, we have what we call transition, and it depends upon the relative pipe roughness. If we have greater roughness, the turbulence happens quicker. If we have less roughness on the inside of the pipe, the complete turbulence happens at a much greater Reynolds number. So it's not as simple and straightforward as we thought before. It does depend on several things. But let's say, for example, we calculate the, the Reynolds number, and we found it to be 10 to the fifth, or 100,000. But then you realize 100,000, that has to be turbulent. Well, it again depends upon the relative roughness of the pipe. But under normal circumstances, the relative roughness of the pipe is high enough. So let's say the relative roughness is 0.03. So we come up here until we meet the line that represents 0.03. Then we come over here, and that represents a friction factor of about 0.05 to 0.06. Now these numbers, since I have them hand-drawn, are not exact, so don't take them as exact numbers, but they're approximate numbers. But it gives you the picture of how it's done using a real Moody diagram. Notice that if the relative roughness of the pipe is greater, then yes, we'd expect a greater friction factor. If the relative roughness of the pipe is not as big, then we, accept, then we expect a smaller friction factor. And of course, a smaller friction factor gives you a smaller head loss. A greater friction factor gives you a greater head loss. And it all has to do with the Reynolds number and the relative pipe roughness. And on the Moody diagram, we're then able to find the corresponding friction factor necessary to calculate the head loss. And that's why we need a Moody diagram. Without it, it'd be pretty tough.